if you haven't got it, mm. if you've got it, if you've got the right instincts, the right imagination, the right powers of invention, if you have something behind you, some sort of foundations of experience and versatility, that's fine. You will go on. You will last. But if you haven't, and the majority has not got these qualities, and you always play the same part versically, or basically, or slight variations on it, and that's all you can do, you'll be through in ten years or even five, when the public will eventually say, well, you know, they're always doing the same thing. Mm. And the moment that's, that happens, it's the beginning of the end. You start at the top of the ladder, only one way to go. Then is, don't underestimate what you know. And the whole question of choice is going to hang on this thing, that in your heart of hearts, you know. And if you choose against that consistently, that is the only way to silence that voice. And if you listen to that voice, it will become strong and it will drown out everything else. That's the, that is the specific action of character building. That's what it does. But it's also hard, too. And it's not hard because you don't know. You don't have a sense of what the right thing is or in what direction the right thing lies. It's hard because it's confusing and because very often you have to give up something. Something you want, something desirable. The reason an act of courage is hard to imagine is because you might die. And you're not made to die, you're made to live. Soul rebels against it. On the other hand, are you made to live in shame and cowardice? Everybody knows the answer to that question. C.S. Lewis writes in uh, Mere Christianity when he's talking about the moral law, you don't see people running around congratulating themselves on their cowardice. <laughs> now, how do you get to the place where in a moment of panic, you don't do that? And the answer is, what do you think is the, the major appeal of horror? Why are we drawn to it? Principally, I suppose, escapism, because it's utterly unlike our real lives, which I suppose today are trying to be perhaps humdrum. I think that this particular kind of film gives you a jolt, an emotional jolt. It can help you to blow off steam, an emotional safety valve. But principally, escapism into a world of fantasy and unreality and the weird, which I think we harbor within all of us a basic, perhaps subconscious love for things that we don't understand and don't know. I think if a person is already unbalanced or has perverted habits or thoughts, perhaps this might, on occasions, push them over the edge slightly. Otherwise, I think it's just a question of the audience going to be entertained and they enjoy it. I have met people who claimed to be Satanists, who claimed to be involved with black magic, who claimed that they not only knew a lot about it, but as I said, I've certainly never been involved and I warn all of you, never, never, never. You will not only lose your mind, you lose your soul.